The Fruits Basket ends its first season with a cherry on top moment to make us just walk out saying, that's how it's done, that's how you not only start, but also conclude a first season of a full adaptation of a classic manga. And by the end of the credits, they even confirm when to expect the second season, which is confirmed to be in 2020, so next year. I imagine they'll release it either in the spring or summer season of next year, but only time will tell. Obviously, they'll release more details when they need to, but it's nice to know that it's not even going to be a full year break, which is what I thought they were going to do. So, this episode, it kind of, really, I wasn't sure what I wanted out of this episode. I felt pretty satisfied last week if I was emotionally gripping, and it was nice to see they immediately carried on and gave us even more emotional closure, but this time for Kyo and his father. And this relationship is so fascinating to me because of how sweet it is, but like with a lot of relationships in Fruits Basket, maybe they didn't start off with the most righteous of intentions, or maybe what it might appear to be on the outside. Because we know for Cosma, it's someone who, he felt guilty, he felt like a horrible person for how he treated his grandfather and how people around him did, and that's why he ultimately took in a kid who he didn't want the same thing to happen to, but also as a form, as we learn, to hopefully feel better about himself. But he admits very quickly he loved him like a son. But to actually see the reason why they've never fully got into that father-son dynamic was because he pushed himself away because he thought it would be best for someone like Kyo, because he overheard Kyo saying, don't say he's my father. And it's one of those situations where if you have the full context, you understand it's Kyo lashing out because he feels like a burden and he doesn't want such a great man to feel responsibility or feel like a failure. Blame me, don't blame him, I'm to blame, not this amazing man. But if you hear it from the outside, it sounds like, well, I love this guy like a son, but I guess I am just his teacher. And it's so interesting to see how the first half of this episode played out, because Akio waking up after everything that transpired, pissed off and confused, like where did he go to that entire conversation between Toru and him and just him actually being able to open up and feel genuine as he feels like a burden and Toru's like, this is nothing other than a father speaking right now. And to see the relationship and how it comes full circle before the first season wraps up, it really does feel like finally they're looking at each other as father and son, no longer teacher and student, which is what they both wanted but feel like they didn't deserve. And that was so sweet to see that not only did he hit Kyo, and Kyo is just like amazed, like, Toru, did you see that? Look how strong he is. But he says, son. He calls him his son, and Kyo says, I'm going to be worthy of calling you my father one day. I'm going to train. I'm going to be better. I'm not going to lash out and be angry. He does get a little angry in this episode, but still, it was just sweet. It gives you a smile on your face. It feels like the perfect resolution after everything that happened, especially for a man who thinks... I acted selfishly, I took off his bracelet, I forced my own feelings on someone who doesn't look at me as a father and probably will hate me for what I did, but he doesn't hate him for what he did. It was something that allowed the connection with Toru to become even more special, and he is his father, and I just love that. It was so sweet, it had its funny moments, its adorable moments, and its heart-punching moments, and that's what was so great about the first half. It really felt like the perfect conclusion to what we saw last week, and I thought last week was already the perfect conclusion, but it was nice that they immediately give us resolution to that and show that they still have so much further left to go and that he is going to continue to visit the dojo, have dinner over there, and really flesh out their family bond. And it was so nice to see that, and we still had a second half of an episode left. And that's where they started taking the Yuki content, which I'm glad. I mean, Yuki's kind of been pushed to the back burner for a little bit here, so it's nice to see that he's struggling with his own things after what he's seen and what he's feeling, and what we kind of have hinted at with his emotional abuse in the past, he's very afraid of letting emotions take over and becoming something that he's afraid of. And he can't reveal all his secrets to Toru yet, he can't and won't reveal them, but that's okay. And that's the difference between a series that both understands where it shouldn't make changes from the manga, but also one that understands it's going for a full adaptation. They don't need to just have Yuki reveal everything that he's hiding away. It's natural that he should want to keep secrets at this point in time, but still want to be friends, wants to be associated with someone like Taru, and grow over the summer, over the years. That's what's so great, is that they lay the foundation of obviously where Season 2 could go. We got a lot of hints and clues towards the end of the episode, but for the most part, it was... 
what everyone's feeling after the aftermath. And not everyone's going to know what happened in the past couple of episodes as people ask, what's bothering you? I can't tell you. It's something that is just gripping, and I'm glad characters aren't just saying, okay, this is what happened, yeah, there's a crazy form last night, I'm feeling all these emotions from my past. No, that would feel like forced plot progression. This is how humans should act, and even though they are supernatural with their zodiac curses, they're people, they're human. That's why people like Fruits Basket, the character writing logically makes sense. Why people would go towards a monstrous cat and why people would push away against it. It just feels like this episode was the cherry on top, and to see everyone come, well, most people come in towards the house towards the end of the episode, and just, it kind of is like, that's what you want to see. You know there's more, and hell, we don't even have to wait a week, a month, a season to learn when the next season's coming. Like, this was confirmed to be a full adaptation before it even started airing. So we knew it was going to get more, but it's so satisfying to not only have this season wrap up and feel like, the first part here, the first third of the story adapted, and it's like, yes, that's what you want to see. It feels so concluded, so perfect, the next chapter can start as we look back at the first chapter and say that was close to perfection. And we already know 2020 for the next season, so it's not even that long of a break. It feels like they gave us exactly what we wanted, and then some, and then said, hey, we're not even going to keep you guessing, next year we will return. It feels like the production is just so tight, they have a good schedule, and they know what they're doing. And unlike with the first anime, the manga is very pleased with this one. She's very much happy, and this is what she wanted, was the entire reason for the anniversary, is they wanted to bring it to life, a full adaptation, in the way that she always envisioned. And I think it can definitely show the quality of how much of a passion project this feels like. The first season just feels like rewarding. You look from the first episode all the way to 25, and it feels like there was a natural progression. Sometimes they went into their own thing. It was slice of life. It was comedy. Then it was dramatic. Then it was horrifying. And that's what makes it feel so human. That life has an unlimited amount of twists and turns. Both the good and the bad. And to see how this episode concluded. It was like that's perfect. Hell I would have been fine if this episode was only 12 minutes. And all we got was the Kyo and his father situation. I would have been like yeah that's fine. That's good enough. But they give us that second half, and that's like the extra cherry on top. I already thought we got the cherry on top, and then they give us a bit more. It just feels like this series wants the viewer to feel rewarded and feel like it keeps giving you more than you're expecting while tying up everything that you want to and the stuff that hasn't been touched upon or tied up yet. You know it's coming in the second to third season. You know what's going to happen. And that's what's so rewarding about Fruits Basket. It's been such a fun journey to watch how these characters evolve and flesh out. See how they immediately are so much more than what you might want to take them at at face value. And see that everyone is a person and they have their demons in their closet and they have their future. And that everyone is kind of wearing a mask and it's time to tear those masks off and let the beast come out. And see who will accept you for who you are and how you can evolve and grow from maybe where you started off in the past. I just feel like Fruits Basket is one of the more rewarding anime experiences in quite a few years and it feels like it knows what it's doing and I don't really have an issue with it. I really don't think it visually dipped all that much. I think the characters across the board have been great, even the one that may piss you off. It feels like they were justified with why they were doing the things that they were and even if you can't justify it, it feels as if, holy shit, that just adds for a really interesting layer to the narrative. It just feels like it kind of did everything it should. And I can understand why this series for so long has remained in people's hearts and why people are like, thank God it's finally getting a full adaptation because now you don't have to just go, you know, you get a great first season and you're like, oh, I guess I gotta go finish it in the manga. No, we get a great anime overall and it just shows in the quality. I'm just so glad that we got the anniversary so this could be greenlit in a full adaptation, which you rarely get, especially for how many episodes they're going to need to cover this. You don't get to see many adaptations get greenlit in the way it is. But when you have a series as popular as this, it's not completely surprising that it did happen. As I've mentioned before, I do have many more kind of Fruits Basket analysis style videos planned, but I'm not going to be getting to them until probably later into the second season. All the ideas that I would want to get to, for the most part, I'm going to need more content within the future to cover. So you won't have any more Fruits Basket content until, well, I guess until the second season starts airing again. And then whenever I have enough ideas and just things to write about within the season, I can give you those bigger videos, but there definitely will be more Fruits Basket content in the near future, actually, which is nice to see that I will be able to get back up here and talk with you guys about what I'm feeling about the new episodes, but also larger topics at hand, so do look forward to those and everything like that, but definitely more Fruits Basket content in the future. I'm here to the very end, and I mean, it's not surprising how much I love this series that I would fully cover this show, 
with extra videos on top, so no one's going to be shocked by that, but just to throw that out there so everyone does know, because I didn't mention those other topics before, so you know when to expect them whenever the second season comes around and I have those ideas, so you know. Overall, this was a fantastic episode, fantastic first season overall, but what did everyone think, both with this episode and the season overall? How excited are you for next year in the second season? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like, and also hit that subscribe button if you have been new. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.